This is an instructional video for the supraacetabular pelvic external fixator, percutaneous with fluoroscopic guidance. Indications. This procedure is indicated for temporary or definitive fixation for unstable pelvic ring fractures. This procedure restores rotational stability in vertically stable patients. The images shown here represent a typical patient who may be a candidate for an external fixator, a 30-year-old male, status post MVC, who sustained an APC2 pelvic ring injury. For this video, the demonstration will be using a cadaver. The goals, tamponade, correction of deformity, fracture stability, function, and pain control. Preoperative planning. Consider a CT pelvis with 3D reconstruction prior surgeries in the abdomen and pelvis, current as well as known spine trauma or spinal precautions. Patient positioning. Patient positioning is recommended supine on a radiolucent Jackson flat table. We recommend a Foley catheter to decompress the bladder. You may consider a pillow under the knees to gently flex the hips and relax the neurovascular bundle. Bilateral SCDs are recommended for DVT prevention. We also recommend images before patient is prepped and draped to ensure you are able to obtain relevant intraoperative films and make adjustments as needed before the field is sterile. Position patient with their arms spread out to the side to allow ease of fluoroscopy entry. Important fluoroscopic views. The obturator outlet or teardrop view, the obturator inlet view, and the iliac oblique view. Basic operating room equipment. We start with the drill, of course, and the battery which is attached. We have our curved pelvic bar, which is for the external fixator. We also have a connecting bar with a connecting rod that can be used in addition to that. We have a 3.5 cannulated drill bit as well as a 1.25 K wire to assist with the fixation, a T-handle chuck to allow advancement of the shanz pins. Here we have two K wires which are 6.0 hydroxyapatite coated that allows for more definitive fixation with a larger shanz pins, more stability. Two 5.0 shanz pins which are non-self-drilling, non-self-tapping, those are what is more standardly used, and two bar to rod connectors for the curved pelvic external fixator, which is what we will be using. A compression distraction advice that allows compression, especially for APC type injuries in this case that we will be showing today. We have the four guide wire drill bit, which is used for the 6-0 shanz pins. And we also have the three sleeve guide, which if you can see, it screws in right here to allow for more stability and more control while advancing the K-wire and the shans pins. And then here we have your standard tightening devices as well as two pin covers for the pelvic external fixator. Procedure. All intraoperative staff should be wearing lead and appropriate eye protection at all times. We also recommend fluoro comes in from the contralateral side of injury with image intensifier over the top. This decreases radiation exposure to the surgeon. In most scenarios, you do not need to drape in the legs. You may consider draping in the legs for higher energy injuries. We also recommend Ioban to the inguinal region. Palpate the ASIS. Find the AIIS approximately 2 cm distal and 2 cm medial to the ASIS. Keep in mind that the patient's anatomy has been disturbed from the injury. Your hand position will need to start more laterally as the pelvis tends to be externally rotated with these type of injuries. Confirm start position with C-arm. Start on the obturator outlet or teardrop view to confirm your start point. Make a small stab incision with a 15 blade along Langer's lines that extends medial to the expected pin site to reduce soft tissue tension following reduction. Take care to avoid the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Using a blunt instrument such as a tonsil, spread soft tissue down until you are on bone. You will be going through rectus femoris tendon down to AIIS. You also may use the tonsil to help insert the triple sleeve guide. Insert the drill guide just superior to the AIIS, aiming toward the SI joint approximately 30 degrees medially and 20 degrees cranial toward the PSIS. Consider using more superior start point aiming toward the sciatic notch for more patient-friendly positioning for the external fixator. Take care to avoid the sciatic notch. Keep in mind the pin tends to exit laterally out of the ilium and adjust your hand accordingly. Get the tunnel view again to confirm your start point with the obturator outlet as well as the obturator inlet and iliac oblique views. 
the X-ray tech can mark C-arm angles to allow quicker return to the correct position. Because of the shape of the AIIS, the drill has a tendency to slide medial or lateral. This can be avoided by first using a 1.25K wire with a cannulated drill. A more caudal start point will help prevent skiving. Recommend a shorter K wire to allow room for fluoro. Again, confirm start point on fluoro with teardrop view, which correlates to the external and internal iliac walls, also known as the obturator outlet view. Second view with the obturator inlet to confirm trajectory and advance K wire one centimeter. Then obtain your third view with the iliac oblique to ensure you are out of the sciatic notch and pointed toward the PSIS and just cranial to the sciatic notch for your trajectory. Advance K wire two to three centimeters to secure start point. Remove the inner sleeve and insert cannulated drill. Repeat obturator inlet, obturator outlet, and iliac oblique views. Then insert the five or six millimeter diameter shantz pin through the guide to posterior ilium for best bone purchase. Repeat on the contralateral side. You may consider moving the C arm to the other side so it is not in the way and to reduce surgeon radiation exposure. It is helpful to have a table that tilts for ease of intraoperative views. Following pin placement, place clamps on the outside of the pins for better compression through the pelvis. Secure with two connecting rods with adequate room for the abdomen when the patient is seated, as well as room for swelling to prevent skin necrosis. As seen here, you also may use a curved pelvic-specific rod. The compression distraction device can then be used for additional pelvic reduction if needed. Post-operative care. Patient should be touched down weight bearing on the unstable side. Recommend routine pin site care as well as pin site checks. We also recommend a compression dressing around the pins to prevent excess drainage, especially when patient begins to mobilize. Also, formulating a plan to return to the operating room for definitive fixation if an open reduction internal fixation is recommended. Most